If I get drunk and I pass out on the floor now, baby, then you'll follow me no more. If I drink and I... I don't know words. I think I'll have myself up here. Perfect. I, think we I love it. it. Totally nailed it. Toad's opening. World's worst opening to a show. I think it'll be hilarious. Do oh, it anyway. It'll be hilarious. Welcome to the biggest episode of At the Bar podcast to date. I'm Micah Palooza. It's the Beer Palooza. It's my birthday Beer Palooza. I'm just calling it Micah Palooza. Okay, that's cool. I'm your host, Mike, and with me is Hollywood. Are you still going by the moniker? I don't know. Whatever. I'll be Hollywood I'll still. I'll be the play-by-play, and, and Jeff is the uh, color commentator. Yeah. Who's witty all the time. Not all the time. Not all the time. Sometimes. So we, we are here. It is the day before my birthday. I don't even know Woo! when this, I don't even know when this, this is going to air. Yeah. So it's April 7th. It National is. National Beer Day. National Beer Day. So yep. happy National Beer Day, everybody. This is April 7th. My birthday is actually legally tomorrow. So this episode is going to be a two-parter. Okay. First part. Ready. I got some Toppling Goliath. Oh, all right. Disclaimer. Pseudo Sue is not here. I know. So I know we're going to break a couple of people's hearts. They're going to not listen or watch. but We're just losing fans by the week. We have we have everything, to my knowledge, but Pseudo Sue. Um, I know I was telling you before the show that I went on an epic search for it, and it mm-hmm. came up empty-handed. Jesse would have been able to help you find it. I'm sure. He's a beer searcher. Yeah. So no Pseudo Sue, but we have three or four other beers, which we'll get into soon. The second half of the show will be we'll be opening uh, Mike's beer chest and just kind of pulling out things that we want to open up. It's like a treasure open. chest with just a lot of cool rare beer in it. A lot of cool rare beer. A uh, couple Dogfish Head. This is my birthday. Dogfish Head is my favorite brewery, so I got a couple Dogfish Heads in there. I got a couple Deuce Souths in there um, because some uh, MIA. Some MIA. So we got we got some cool things going on. Mm-hmm. So let's just jump in. Let's fucking go. Let's to go it. to let's it. Do it. Let's so do it. Yeah. Any preference on which? I, I could literally I could care less, care less man. Right. It's do, it's toppling Goliath. What so are we? I'm gonna drift away from the mic here and uh, open the chest and whip out a toppling Goliath. And I'm gonna watch the baseball game while you do it. Oh, he scored a run. The treasure chest's top fell off. Okay, I'm back. So let's do it nice, a light one. This is toppling Goliath's Dorothy New World Lager. Blue can, tall boy. Nice. I like their cans. Jeff has had this. I have. Because I gave him one of the cans from the four-pack. Very kind of you, yep. So, as I open, I should put the the can by the mic. I'm already fucking up. It's your birthday. It's cool. It's cool. So, we're going to do nice full pours here because... Because there's two of us, five-ounce snifters and a 16-ounce can, so we got plenty. We'll save some for Darren, for the house. I think that's... For our homies. That should be his nickname is the house. Oh, we got to give some for the house. That's just Darren. Oh, you know, Lauren can drink some oh, today. Oh, yeah, Lauren can drink some. She's busy, though. She'll have to wait till later. <laughs> I'll be right over. <laughs> it's like birthday week. You got one. Lauren yeah, had one. Just, yeah. Lauren had four in a row, like six. She, six like I think it's like 21. six days. Yeah, I mean. She's been celebrating. I don't blame her. We were like that at 21. I had one epic day. Not a whole weekend. Anyway. Yeah, I don't do birthdays anymore. 21, we're, we're 21 probably ruined it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> After 25, they're not fun till 30. So this one for a, what is this? The pale lager. So we didn't read any of the can because, as typical, I'm unprepared. I just opened the shit. I think it's brewed with lightning bolts. Uh, I'm not even going to read it. I don't care. I'm not going to read the description. Read it. I'll, 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 post, I'll post on the video. You don't want me to read it? I no, always can, read them. Read it. Named after our founder's grandmother, Dorothy is our classic beauty. She is easygoing, mild in body, and clean in taste. Each sip charms the senses with distinct flavor and refreshing simplicity. Just like Grandma Dorothy, our unfiltered flagship lager is forever dear to our hearts. Simple yet complex. Aw, that was sweet. <laughs> that was sweet. I was expecting something <laughs> like like funny and made with rain clouds, the rain and clouds and lightning yeah. bolts or Only something. Texas but does that. yeah, so. For a, it's, you say it's a pale lager, right? Yeah, it's very, it's golden though. It's, it's very, yeah, it's very darker. Maybe or more, more golden. It, I mean, it than, just, than it normal. only says lager on there. I'm assuming pale lager by taste because I've had it before, but it doesn't necessarily say what kind of lager style it is. Yeah, it doesn't say. Yeah, I would assume it's kind of like. It a, did say unfiltered, so it's an unfiltered lager, which right. probably gives it a little bit more of the color so that it has. It, yeah, it's a pretty gold, cloudy. 
Or mm-hmm. it could be a little quiet, a little hazy. But um, we'll see if it's better than the Tejas. That's really good. I like. I like it. It's yeah. it's pilsnery. It's a little bit yeah, hoppier and a little bit, a little bit fuller than than a pale lager. Definitely yeah. better than your your run of the mill mainstream stuff. Definitely enjoyable and it's very an enjoyable. Enjoyable lager. light. I, I would I would say this is pretty neck and neck with the Tay House we had a couple mm-hmm. episodes ago from Texas. Thanks again, Jesse. Um, very impressed with the Tay House. Very impressed. This one's impressive too. It sucks we can't get it here in Orlando. Well, we could, but they're always sold out of it. Total wine. Well, they're they're distributing to Orlando now, right? Slowly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, like, Brew Hub their central spot for distributing this? Yeah, so these Tabla and Goliath cans are not from Iowa. They're from Brew Hub in good old Lakeland, Florida. Lakeland? Go Polk County. So, I know someone's going to shit on it, but it is what it is. So yeah, these, mean, are, these are these toppling Goliath are made in like we we can't get we can't get we real toppling so we're so, gonna take what we get while, yep. while we're down here. The recipe should be the same. Everything should be the same. So you know we're gonna go off that. But um, I really like this a lot. Um, I would say it's pretty neck and neck with the Tejas. So it's a pretty full flavor. For, I think Tejas was a little bit more like uh, like chuggable yeah. with still good flavor. This is a little bit more full, um, and it has a. A little bit like higher hot profile. German. It's it's German style for yeah. sure. It's like Pilsnery. It's got that kind of like nice hot profile. Just yeah. very very minimalistic, but not overpowering. Yeah, yeah. So like, it's a, I, dude, it's crushable for mm-hmm. sure. Um, is there an ABV? Yeah, we should on this? shotgun these. <laughs> Let's do it. I have a whole other one. Uh, points off. For I no will ABV. find. I'll find ABV. And if I have my laptop here, so I can look it up if we need so it. So there's no ABV on the can, which is which is a foul. You gotta have ABV in my in my opinion. I think you legally have to have the ABV. So I don't know how they're getting away with doing that. Well, all I'm the sure time. you're wrong on that. Five point five percent alcohol. It's built into the uh, oh, artwork. The, the art. Five point five. It's pretty good. A little higher than normal. Slightly higher. So Jeff. Yeah, I think you do have to have it on there. So a lot of people like hide it in the artwork and stuff. Oh yeah. Jeff, come to that time. One to ten. One to ten, or one to a hundred. <laughs> With that one to a thousand. One to a thousand. Um, my one to ten score on this. Out of a thousand. Taking it for, uh, they're both going to be the same. Let's I'm do, not going to do, do. Yeah, let's do uh, style. Stylistically for yeah. the whole thing, I'm not going to try and do my Personal my preference. own preference. Yeah. Um, for the style, it's perfect. It hits it. Um, assuming it's a pale lager, it has a, a a good German kind of feel and taste to it. Yeah. Which is nice. It gives it a little bit more flavor, a little bit more complexity. Um, I'm going to give it like an. 8.7. Now, you did give Tejas a 9.9 for uh, a 9.5 for style. I did. I, I'm currently editing the video of that episode oh, as we're recording all right. this. So, you, did give, you gave Tejas originally an 8.7. That's very, I mean, an 8.7, very high. An 8.7 for preference. And then me and Jesse. So, that's where, I, that's where I'm kind of at with this. I think, you your eight, score to I think I'm like an 8.7 with this. Um, for style. I mean, it nails the style, but yeah. What, I, I think it's in line with Tejas, so uh, 8.7 is what I originally gave it. Okay, uh, I would give this one for style. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go right in line with the Tejas, a 9.5. Uh, I, I think it for the style, it's a top-notch beer. Yeah. With and there's German characters to it, and, and it excels. It does. Yeah. You know, I don't think you, you get really any much better than than a pale lager like this one. So yeah. I'm gonna give it. It's an A. It's an A beer for me. And you're, you gave it a B plus. B plus. Okay. So we're gonna finish our glasses here. It's a nice day out, man. And we're gonna open up the next Top and Goliath. Beautiful day out. All right, let's see here. Yeah, we're like, are we earlier? Uh, well, no, I guess daylight saving time makes it brighter for us now. Which which is good for video. Once you get um, the new upgraded equipment. Yep. It should we're be. upgrading our video equipment, yep. guys. We're getting a GoPro Hero 4 Black, the latest model of the top of the line. <laughs> Just on the phone. So the next one, Jeff is taking a phone call here. We're, uh, we're going to the next beer here. <laughs> I'm back, guys. <laughs> He's back. GM problems. I just had to hang up on somebody and tell them I have to turn my mic back <laughs> on. To turn my mic. What? <laughs> so the next one we have, I pulled out of the Mike's beer chest, is Toplin Goliath's Rover Truck. I didn't have this one. 
You didn't? No. So I, I had one. I gave you one. I had this one, and it is there. There's a dark beer, right? There's a stout or a porter, I believe. Correct. Mm-hmm. IPA. Yeah, but I only had that's next after this one. I only got one of those. Okay. The only, I got a four pack of the Dorothy, which we just had a four pack of the Rover truck, and then I only had a single of the next beer. I don't know why. I don't think I got this one, but I, I must you, have. I gave you J Dub's Milk Bell, whatever the fuck it's called. That's maybe that's. That we was good. Drinking, we were drinking a lot that night. That was good. Um, hold on, I'm getting a text. All right, so um, Rover truck. It's a red can, Jeffrey. If you want to read the uh, description sure. there, and I'll get your glasses. Hopefully, this one's as sweet as the other. Thunderbolts and lightning. Baby, get the keys the, to the rover truck. Man, let me get this oatmeal stout. Oat, this is an oatmeal stout. I told you there's a stout. Is that a stout? Yeah. I haven't had it. I never okay, so I did it. have this right, one. Okay, I was like, I thought there's a stout, right? I've I, never had these. So. This can is deceiving because it looks like it's going to be an it amber looks like ale. A red ale, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, baby, get the tree. Get the trees. Get the keys to the rover truck. Man, let me get this oatmeal stout over, bruh. <laughs> bruh. They say bruh. That's my word. <laughs> How they spell it, though. Like me, like B R U H, bro. Ain't no beer here up in Iowa like it. Bust your big head is what is. This is like cryptic how they write it. Is what was told to us. Now play it how you say it. I bet you won't. I think this is a song lyric that they changed words to. <laughs> you're having trouble here. <laughs> I, I am. It's like the Jeff, way it's chopped. Your five ounces in, and you're, it's, and you're fucking dude, up. But <laughs> dude, try and read this. It's choppy. There's like random punctuation thrown in the middle of the sentences. It's like impossible to oh, read. If you look at the bottom of the cans. They tell you when they canned them. Cheers. It also says cheers. cheers. All right. I'll have you drinking at sweet molasses when I give you what you want. Looking good. Doing bro i don't know and my nerves bad with it drink on up you know you're gonna hit it that's gotta be like some kind of weird song lyric some country song probably. something strange i don't know what that description was so as jeff was struggling to read that i noticed on the bottom it says can december 1st 2015 so this is pretty fresh yeah you know it's been in the fridge ever since i got it and it's a looks like a land rover oatmeal with, stuff with money flying out from the top so I'm gonna find out what that what that What's description the is. It's probably in the artwork again, I would imagine. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. And it says live beer, please refrigerate. So that's pretty awesome. I like that. So let's crack this bad boy open. So definitely, really dark head on that. It's, it's it's really sand beige. We should start bringing napkins here. I'm fucking spilling shit. All right. It's definitely written a lot better on Beer Advocate, the description. Okay. It's a little bit more readable. I'm not going to reread it, but right. it actually... I mean, I think it's still song lyrics, to be honest with you. It just sounds weird, but... Also kind of sounds like what what now what's, What style is this? Oatmeal style. Oatmeal style? So... Your head kind of dissipated a little bit, but yeah. you can kind of tell from mine. It's really dark. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a, a beach sand wow. color. Uh, really, it's really dark, almost black color. Not even a little bit of light gets through it. I'm holding it up. Yeah, it's midnight. Nothing. Yeah. So color spot on. Heads, head retention's air. It's lingering. Smell. Nose is really good. Oh yeah. Really chocolatey. Chocolate. A little bit of roast. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, not really, not really a whole lot. Yeah, just roasted chocolate. Yeah. So we're going for the taste here. Really roasty. Yeah. It's a little chewy too. A lot more roasty than chocolate. Yeah, I would I would say it was more of a I would assume it'd be more of a coffee stout if I didn't know it was an oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Um, Thicker body, you can tell. Oatmeal thickens it up. Body's a little on the on the high medium side. Um, I don't know. Makes it very smooth. It's a very like smooth, but yet What's the full bodied. You have it pulled up on Beer Advocate. Oh yeah, I do have it pulled up on Beer Advocate. Doesn't take it. Five point seven. So this one is. A little bit point higher. two points higher than a lager. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not too thrilled about that. You would think it'd be a little bit a higher little, than at that. At least in the six and a half, maybe seven. Yeah. 
a little underwhelming. Um, Definitely not their best one that I've had before. No. Actually, side note, I picked up Three Daughters uh, Sternline Oatmeal Stout. It's, mm-hmm. in my, it's at my house. I was going to bring it, but uh, I didn't. I like the can art. A Range Rover with a lot of uh, money flying out of it. Pretty cool. Doesn't yeah. say 5.7 on it, though, anyway. No. But apparently it's 5.7. 5.7. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, Beer Advocate went real high with its rating. So what did Beer Advocate say? 86, so 8.6 on our scale. The bros or the writers? Go up. Beer Advocate score, very good. Okay, gives it an 8.6. The reviews give it a 64. Just kidding, that's 64 reviews. So Beer Advocate gives it an 86 out of 100, or on our scores an 8.6. Most of the view, m- most of them on Beer Advocate are, are lower than that. Yeah, so I'm gonna go a lot lower, a lot lower. I'm gonna go on a limb and give this a seven. Average, an average one. Yeah, I mean a seven is what you get out of what we. Uh, it's meaning it, you're hitting style at seven, like Preston always says. He does out of right. five, so a three out of five is hitting style. For us, I would say a seven is a C minus. That's an average. That's your average, average as uh, as Boston calls them, shelf turd. Yeah. That's your average available anywhere, oatmeal stout that you'll get at any craft beer place. Um, I'm going to go a little bit higher, just a tiny bit higher. I do like the roast, and I like the nose, um, okay. but I just – there's not – there's not – it's, it's, yeah, it's just a regular-ass beer. I'm going to give it like a 7.4. <laughs> That's new shirt, regular-ass beer. I'm going to give it a 7.4. I, I, it's not – it's very underwhelming. I'm – so you'd give it a C. I'd give it a C minus. I think there's people that probably will eat up the comments on this and say, "Oh, if you got it from the brewery versus Brew Hub, it's probably amazing." <sighs> yeah. But there's Boston staring at us creepily Look, through the he's window. All dressed up. He all I know he got a new job, so he's Did a big he? boy. He's got a bigger boy job now. He already had a big boy job. Now he has a bigger boy job. We have, we're actually we're getting a guest on the show pretty soon. That's not Boston. I have some people wanted to join us. Cool. Yeah. They just parked. Good. So. Um, yeah, so I would give this a, I would give this a seven four. I'd give it a, a mediocre C. Okay, I'm going up seven point two, and that's it. No higher. No higher. No higher. Yeah, it's it's enjoyable enough that I would drink it if I ordered it, and I wouldn't be offended by it, but I wouldn't be blown away either. And it's definitely not going to become one of my top beers no. in that style. No, so. definitely a C minus beer. Hit style. Nah. I feel like a lot of the hype around Toppling Goliath is hype. I think a lot of it's the pseudo Sue. Yeah, I think it's what it is. We have to and, have and it. And the Golden Nugget, which is coming up next. All right, Golden Nugget. Golden Nugget. Supposedly, from what I've read, it is their second best beer behind, obviously, the Pseudo Sue, which we do not have. Why? Because it's sold out everywhere, and I can't find it. But as I'm going to the chest now, Golden Nugget is looking awesome. Man, sweet green label. I think yeah, they I think purposely. I think they purposely so tried to make this can look like it's weed and not hops, because it is definitely hops, but it also looks a lot like weed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm trying to move my feet. A winning this. combination of golden promise malts and nugget hops. This IPA delivers a bouquet of hop, citrus, and nugs. evergreen aromas, followed by a floral sweetness. Bold, hop-forward taste captivates the senses, leaving behind a pleasant bitterness that lingers and or lingers in the finish. That mic's on, by the way, Goose. What's up, yeah. Goose? How's it going? That He's mic is off. The mic is on, bro. Yeah, it's, it's on. off, bro. It's, it's, on, it's, bro. it's on. off. <laughs> Jeff, you pissed hate, me off every time you say that. I hate that. It's you. off, man. Hey, Goose. So Welcome to the party. So yeah. To catch up, here is Dorothy New Lager. Oh, that's so Goose, we're looking forward to your gooseberry beer that you're going to name after yourself. And then you have the Rover truck here, which is an oatmeal stout. We haven't decided on the name yet. It's going to be called Goose? No, it's not. We don't know what we're going to call it. Oh, do you not want it to be on the show? He can edit it out. No, it's fine. We just don't know what we're going to call it yet. Okay. I don't have a name for my beer, but that's besides the point. I think I think we might name our, – our slogan is we're fam brewing, and our slogan is fam for friendship. Fam for friendship. We have our we have our, our youngest fan of the show coming up here, little man Mikey. Oh, what's up? Hi, bud. That's a nice, easy drinking lager. Solid lager. Yeah, we like the lager a lot. Right. Talk. Um, 
You so you tried the lager. Yeah. Now try the oatmeal stout. The oatmeal stout. Ooh. High hopes. These are this. all toppling Goliath, obviously. All very reputable brewery. First um, time I've had them. Same with uh, Mike. Mike is trying all these for the first time as well. These are his beers, but that's a nice crisp lager. Uh, not lager, oatmeal stout. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's got a lot going on to it for. Yeah, we well, it had. The, you drank it right out of the can, so it's hard for you to get the nose on it. It was roasty with a lot of chocolate in the nose. Hey. You can definitely easily taste that. Hi. Say hi. He's my nephew. Hi, nephew. This is my, Mikey, little Mikey. Aw. Is he named after you? No. Aw. His daddy. <laughs> That's Mara, mom. Hey, how are you? Hi, Mara. <laughs> So anyway, let's go on to this golden nugget. Going on to the golden nugget? Well, I got here, a little I'll pour, nugget over I'll here. I'll pour for you. So the, I like the can art on this one. Say hi. Yeah. He's bashful. Really nice Good can job. art. Let me look this Ooh, the up. The can art is good. Let yeah. me look this up, get a, get a like your shoes. description for you. We'll be right back. Watch where you're walking, goose. Shit, man. <sighs> watch, watch who, what you're saying no. with the baby. See, that's Jeff. That's Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh wow, this all right. This got very good scores. I'm not gonna right, go so into what it is yet. I don't want to influence you. Why'd goose walk away? Man, we poured you a beer and everything. Get is your, get your ass double? back here. I wanted to make sure there was no tickets. Uh, this is a single. Uh, IPA at six no? percent. Okay, <laughs> at six percent ABV. Six is a single at six percent. Correct, which is low. Smells, low end. Smells uh, hoppy. Yeah, obviously. Very. Ooh, but super citrus hopped. Yeah, like crazy so citrus hopped. A little bit of floral, had. little bit of floral, but not much. This is unfiltered as well. I think. Mm. I mean, the color That's is in. a little bit of sediment too. Actually, it's definitely unfiltered. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get these hazy citrus IPAs bomb. now. Yeah, for some, I don't usually like IPAs, but I've been getting into them through like citrusy IPAs, and that's that's a good one. It's got it reminds me a whole lot of heady. Yeah, a lot of heady topper. Um, actually, this, yeah, uh, I think heady topper is a little bit more uh, tropical. Mm -hmm. This is very citrusy. Yeah, with a little bit of pine note to it. Yeah, it's got a good pine finish. Not overwhelming, but you get a lot mm. of the citrus, mm -hmm. or like a grapefruit, earthy, such a earth. Yeah. Yep. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I could definitely easily drink IPAs that. IPAs are starting yeah. to grow on me thanks to uh, Dolph Gishad's romantic chemistry. So I haven't had that one yet. Oh, it's fantastic. It's his but, inspiration for his beer. Right. Yeah. Inspiration. It's not. You free will that. Free will your beer. That's the, be that's the best way to get uh, good results, right? <laughs> Just make it up as you go. Yeah. What do you think we're doing about that? So <laughs> I, I actually really like this a lot considering I don't like IPAs. So... Um, it's light. It's re super refreshing. It's not uh, yeah. enamel wrecker. It's not going to take the enamel off your teeth. It doesn't leave your mouth dry either. No. It doesn't give you so, that musty kind of cotton mouth taste. I think this is an IPA done right. Yes. I would um, agree. Yeah. Um, so, Goose, what would you give it? Rate-wise? Rate-wise, 1 out of 10 with, with decimals. 8.2. It's not bad. Not bad. It's not bad. You, I'm going to go like higher. I do not like I'm IPAs. Gonna go higher I'm going to go higher. I do like IPAs. Um, I think it hits the style perfectly. I wish it had a little higher ABV because I think it would have been nice to have a little bit of a sweeter finish with a higher ABV and a little bit more malt backbone. But um, it tastes like, like a single heady topper, like a single version of a heady topper, like a lower ABV yeah. version. Uh, I'm going to give it a 9.3. Yeah, I'm gonna ooh. give. Ooh, yeah, that's solid actually not beer. bad. I'm gonna give this one a solid nine. Okay. Now an A minus. This is really good. So that's like hates IPAs. IPAs are growing on you. Likes they're IPAs. Scores. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're. Uh, this was really good. So. I like it a lot. I'm gonna give it a nine three, um, which I'm finding that I'm much more lenient of a grader than I thought I would be. But I I, I really enjoy this beer, and I would definitely. I mean, I would buy a. Crap load no, of it if no, it was would you available. Would to Lakeland to buy a four pack of it? Yeah, I would too. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. What do you think? Oh, man? they're at, they're out of they're out of Lakeland. Well, this is yeah, Brew this Hub. One, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, 
not right, so that was the last Iowa, right? Iowa is where uh, we're it's top playing at. Uh, yeah, that's where they're at. Oh, you can only get it at the Brew Hub, though. You, yeah, that's so in that Florida in now, yeah. Total wine. They're starting. To, they're uh, Brew Hub starting to distribute to a lot of the bigger stores. So you're looking at Total Wine, uh, Lucan's, stuff like that. But uh, we're slowly starting to get it in in Orlando because Lakeland is technically a Tampa market. Yeah. So the Bay Area. So Lakeland, uh, Tampa's getting it first before we do. The Bay Area. Those bastards. BAE. Want to say hi? Hi. That was actually me. It was him. <laughs> He's just staring at Hollywood intently. But yeah, this is the. How'd you like the uh, the uh, goose? The uh, the other to the Dorothy and the the rover truck. He really like liked the the, the, the Dorothy. Longer. I like the I like the Dorothy. The it was just nice and refreshing and just. It was a solid lager, and I actually really enjoyed the uh, oatmeal stout too. It had a lot going on to it. Yeah. Okay. What would you give those? Uh, I'd give the Dorothy an eight seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that what you gave it? Yeah. Literally the same exact. And what's this other one called? The rover, rover truck. The rover truck. Probably give that an eight nine. Really? Okay. We didn't like that one that much. You guys so didn't like that one. No, no. we actually shitted on that one. Really? All right. Yeah. But it's because I didn't smell it. No, because that's that's the best part of it, honestly. Really? Yeah. I thought the nose was the best part. I mean, I thought it was a good a, a good C beer. I gave it like a yeah. seven seven or seven four, I think. Yeah, I gave it a seven two. But, um, all right, so what do we give this guy? Uh, you gave it a 9.3, I gave it a 9, and you gave it an 8. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Two. Oh, I think I was subliminally uh, influenced by the fact that Beer Advocate also gave it a 9.3. So I'm changing it. I'm giving it a 9.2 now. Okay. Oh, you're so <laughs> independent. <laughs> so we're going to take a break. I'm going to hang out with Little Man for a little bit, and we'll be right back with more of the Beer Palooza. Beer Palooza. Mike Palooza. We'll be back. We're all going streaking. All right, guys. So we were uh, we were drinking a little bit too much during the episode, and we uh, we accidentally messed up on some of the brewery names as we were talking about some of the beers. So um, whenever you're, you're going to hear some times where we cut in and we're going to cut over the brewery name when we're talking about a beer, and you're going to hear this instead. Miami Brewing. And that's Mike just telling you that that beer is actually from Miami Brewing and not from whatever brewery that we're not going to disclose that we were drunk and accidentally thought that we were talking about. So again, do it again, just for fun. Miami brewing. You're going to hear that every time, right before we talk about a bunch of beers that we, uh, that we poo poo on. So enjoy the show. It's going to be Thanks, awesome. Guys. And we're back. Mm, back. So Jeff, I cut you, I cut you a little short on the last part. Yep. And you kind of got upset. Well, yeah, I wanted to plug something. So we're gonna we're gonna plug it in the beginning, in the front. It's gonna be a plug it in the plug it anywhere, especially we're, we're in the a, front. A plug in the front, a PIB. Okay. So, usually we plug things that are beer related, but I just wanted to plug my hometown of Stewart, Florida. Okay, Stewart. Stewart just won the happiest seaside town in the country. Why are they so happy? Oh. I'm from there, so obviously they're well, happy you're, you're because I'm an alum of, of the Stewart community. Making big moves. You're the, you're the neighborhood celebrity. Correct. But <laughs> it is often referred to as a hidden gem just 45 minutes north of Palm Beach. Stewart is an old, fa- uh, an old Florida old style. <laughs> an old fashioned. An old Florida style treasure. Nestled between two rivers and situated on the Atlantic, the town shares its waters with sea turtles, dolphins, and most famously the sailfish. Its abundant local presence has led the town's reputation as the sailfish capital of the world, which is why I catch them motherfuckers all the time. First ever PIB, <laughs> plug in the beginning. Plug it in the beginning, in the and front. I just had to toot my hometown. I'm really happy. This is like, this has, it's the only Florida town on the list. That's awesome. And it's where I'm from. It, that's awesome. And you can see both sides of the city limits from one stoplight. Really? Yeah, it's real small probably why they're so happy they're real happy so this is part two and as i said in the beginning this is going to be pretty much i'll be pulling out beers as i please and we're going to open them and drink them it's, and it's micah palooza we are, we are, we are, we are. We are just drinking beers drinking beers for mike's birthday that's so, what we're doing which is what i would have done anyway so i'm glad you you can join us Duh. so i thought about which one i'd bring out first and i was like you know what let's just go for it big in the beginning so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one out. Let's right do back. it. The anticipation is killing me. 
We were bringing out the dragon's milk. All right. <laughs> I have not had dragon's milk before. you have a bottle opener? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so this was brought down by a friend who lives in, uh, oh man, Illinois. He brought two of these down. So I thought I'd bring one for the show. And we'll give a little sample for a little man over there. So this is a full pours here because I don't give a full. Because we don't a give a fuck. Bourbon barrel milk stout, I believe. Is it a milk stout? Oh me... my god, the nose is incredible. All right, I'm gonna take the milk stout back and just say it's a it's a bourbon barrel stout because I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure on the stout on the milk stout. There's a bottle. Jeff can read the back if he wants because I know that's his thing. Uh, well. I just like to give you guys a, a thorough description. Right, so you know? I'll read it. It's 2015. It's 11% alcohol. Roasted malt character. So imperial. Intermingled with deep vanilla tones, all dancing in an oak bath. Pairings, red meat, smoked foods, balsamic, rich cheese, and cheese. dark chocolate. Uh, this beer... So, Gets a very good score also on Beer Advocate. I'm not going to tell you again, but... Bourbon Barrel. So this, I know, is, is a whale. I know this one's a whale. Because um, we can't Correct. get it down here. So this is... I would... So you, you smelt it already, Jeff. The nose is incredible. <laughs> oh, I sneeze. I almost smelled my beer. Bourbon Barrel Stout. <laughs> from yeah, the High Gravity Series from New Holland Brewing. Which is in Holy Michigan. Sh- this smell is great. Yes, it is. Wow. One of the better noses I've ever smelled. Oh, my God. Vanilla, like almost like a marshmallow. Tons of bourbon. I mean, tons Lots of barrel. Bourbon. Lots of bourbon or, an, or barrel. You want to smell it? Incredible nose. Little man wants some. He can't get any. Leave it to Michigan, man. Michigan will <laughs> definitely. <opened> mouth. <laughs> they're going to put out good beers in Michigan. So, so this one, yeah, I'm, oh, my God, I'm super excited for. So let's. Oh, dude, aroma is fantastic. What did you say the ABV was? 11. It says 10 on Beer Advocate. I think they're lying to us. I mean, it says 11 on, on the... Uh, I'm going to go with the bottle. It's 11%. 11%. So uh, let's go into it. Woo! Woo! Oh. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's almost candied a little bit. I had to drink it almost like a sour. I had to take a tiny sip to like prepare my mouth for that. And then I did. Now I took a huge gulp and it tastes nothing like 11%. No. Oh man. It's I was super it light and like real sweet. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Real sweet. You get a lot of it's sweet vanilla. The finish is chocolatey. Yeah. Almost like vanilla and chocolate with like bourbon in it. Uh like vanilla and chocolate milk. Yeah. Oh my god. It I can drink this like all day. It does like a milk stout. It's, it's so good. It's I call it a danger beer. Very it's so dangerous. Good that you'll, At 11%, you'll I could cool, drink yeah. a lot of this. Yeah. This is, oh my God, this is so good. Way to open up the whale first, man. How are we going to live up now? I know. We need to remember this one. A lot of bourbon. Oh, oh man. I like this one a lot. I do too. A lot. You know what we should do? What? Should go to the bomb next. <laughs> You want to do it? Kind of. Okay. Is so, it cold? Yeah, it's still, it's still in there, yeah. Oh, All right, yes. so we'll, we'll go into that one. Um, so, ratings. This is a stout. Yeah. 2015, which some age, but now I, I would say it's a year, maybe, maybe a little bit less than a year old. Okay. Um, I'm going to save mine so it warms up, see how it, how it translates. It'll be a lot better warm, but it's still really good. I'm going to give it... Uh, jump right into the score i'm gonna give it a nine flat okay i'm with you i agree too a nine flat yeah i think the nose boosted it from an eight eight which is what i was gonna give it the nose made it a little bit higher just because it's so good it's like candy sweet nose yeah but um i think the beer is just a little light bodied i agree with that yeah it's a little bit on the lighter body the flavor is great but the body the body is just a little light for 11 percent stout you expect it to be a little chewier yeah a little bit uh fuller and i i I mean i love it the flavor is great but i I think i'm just gonna have to give it an a i'm giving it an a yeah more of a you know for a bigger boozy beer you want to you want to have a thicker body so 
I agree. I, yeah, I'd give it a nine flat for pretty much the same reason. Um, I know I've had better beer with Boston's bottle share. Right. Um, but this one's definitely not a – I don't think it's not a B beer. This no, definitely, definitely not. Definitely it's an A. a. Definitely yeah, an A. I give it a nine. I think that's a solid – So. A, a minus, obviously, but A. So I'll put this one off to the side here. Uh, I don't even know where the fuck I'm going to put it. So, and we're going to whip out a present that Jeff got me for my birthday. Yeah. Which I didn't even know he was bringing Dragon's Milk, so now it's kind of cool because they're pretty comparable, I guess. I mean, different flavor profiles for sure, but comparable beers. Jeff, tell us what we have. All right, so this is a 2015 one-year-old Prairie Bomb. Boom. Which is a... Uh, Roasted. Similar <laughs> in style and flavor characteristic to Hunapu. Okay. I've never had Prairie Bomb. Um, so it is an imperial stout aged on coffee, cocoa nibs, vanilla beans, and chili peppers. Okay. Which is very similar. Uh, Hunapu has a little more cinnamon, but still has all the rest of that stuff in it. So this is... Uh, Really good beer. I love Prairie Bomb and readily available lately. I don't know why it's been become more available in the last two years, but yeah, this is this is definitely another whale of a beer. Uh, it's it's their uh, it's the Prairie beer. So this is a year old. Oh, dude, it's that's pretty. Almost no head on that one. Oh, there you go. Okay, it's growing. But this so. has been cellared for a year, so it's been out of light. You mean, you mean either closet or closet. trunk? Closet. Trunk cellared or closet? No, cellared? closet okay. cellared, which my house is always at like 72 degrees, so it's in a good temperature. Yeah. It's in the back of a closet, kept out of light. Head retention's a little low oh, on it. Who's here? What's up, man? Nothing. It's chirping with Piazza. Oh, we're drinking a 2015 bomb. And dragon's milk. And a dragon's milk. Good stuff, man. That's for you guys to split. Thanks, okay. man. Love you, mean it. I think it's off. That's on, Jeff. <laughs> I think that God. mic's off. <laughs> yeah. I just keep telling everybody their mic's off. <laughs> yeah, your mic's off. Your mic's off. <laughs> so the nose on the Prairie Bomb is super chocolate. Super chocolate on the on the Prairie Bomb. A little bit, a little bit. You of get a tiny bit of the chili, though. I think I get a lot oh, of yeah, chili at the end. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I love this beer, but it is uh, very much in your face. It's, it's a good beer, but it. I haven't had Huna this year, though. I haven't either. I thought about bringing it, but I was like... I, I have seven down. bottles sitting at home, and I haven't <laughs> opened one yet. <laughs> so this one, yeah, a lot of chocolate, maybe a little bit of barrel, and I mean, I don't even know there's barrel in here, but maybe it could be the chili peppers. It's just such a complex... I love the way it moves from sweet to pepper, and the pepper's not spicy. It's different. This is you not a beer I feel like you would love because of the pepper profile, but I've had hotter. It's definitely not even. I, I don't think it's hot at all. I think it's just. It adds. It tastes it, like pepper. It, yeah, it adds a little bit of of, of a, a zest, I guess. Yeah. Um. It, I mean, chocolate and pepper is, is always. They've always kind of went hand in hand. Um. This one, I, I like it. I like the dragon's milk a little bit more. Yeah. Um. But it's complex. You get everything is, transitions very smoothly. Mm -hmm. It's rich. It's thicker bodied than the dragon's milk. So I guess that gets points on its own. Um, I just a lot of chocolate. Yeah. On the nose. It actually almost has a good cinnamon note, even though that's not one of the ingredients it says that it has. It almost tastes cinnamon. Like there's a little bit of that in the middle. Yeah. Somewhere in the transition from that you vanilla get, there's, there's and coffee. Else there. There's something else to there. that chili. I mean, it could be a cinnamon, but there, I, I get it. Like in the mid palate, you get a little bit of something as it's, you know, chocolate in the front, peppers in the back, but you get like a mix of something. Yeah. It could be a cinnamon esque uh, flavor. I mean, I don't know if there's cinnamon in there, but it could just be the chocolate and right. pepper mixing. Complex. I mean, more available for us than, than the dragon's milk. Yeah, definitely. So. I, I mean, I'm, I'll go and write them. I, I'm going to give it a nine. I think they're equal. Okay. Uh, what one has, the other one doesn't. What the other one doesn't, the one has. Right. I was actually kind of online with that. I was going to give Dragon Milk, Dragon's Milk the edge by 0.1, and I was going to give this okay. an 8.9. Okay. Um, I think it's 
for some reason, as in, it's definitely, I actually think it, like, I would rather drink this than, than the dragon's milk, but I'm as far as, the other way. as far as the beer, like the, the points go, um, I think the dragon's milk's just a little bit more complex, maybe not even more complex, just it's I, something. I think they're dead equal. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty close. I mean, I, I like the body on, I think it's just that I like the body the on this better. Has, the prairie has the body. Yeah. But their aroma the nose on the dragon milk is better. The, the, yeah, the aroma of the dragon milk. I think the dragon milk is more my style, in terms of more of a bourbon. But you know, Prairie's not. It's like they're not bad beers. Like at the, the end thing. of the day, I just I, I don't think that the Prairie Bomb is a truly a beer, where I do think Dragon's Milk is, and I think that's the only reason I'm giving it an eight point nine. Is I want to keep it from being an a beer, even though it is. It's right. It's right there with it. They're the same. It is enjoyability goes, but I just don't want to give Prairie Bomb I'm, I'm an really, A. There's sometimes I hate that the fact that we agree on almost a lot of things, and I agree with you to the point where I don't think Prairie Bomb should be an A beer. But in terms of when you being, try it next yeah, to an like, A beer, it, it is an A beer. It's like for me, I'm literally teeter tottering on it, the 8.9 and a 9. Yeah, with the bomb. The bourbon, the dragon's milk is, is an A beer for me, hands yeah, down. I agree. But, and they're as enjoyable, but for some reason I just want to hold myself from giving this an A. Yeah, there's some, uh, there, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll stick with a nine. I think it's an A beer. If you like, if you like chocolate and peppers, this is a, a no brainer for you. Um, it is very similar to Hunapu. I would, I would, I prefer dragon's milk. Yeah, now, if these two were at the bar and I'm ordering, I would get a dragon's milk hands down. Yeah, that, but they're equal. Like they offset each other completely. Yeah, you know, Prairie has a body. They're not comparable. They're not comparable in flavor either. So no. it's like us us trying them back to forth. The only thing that's comparable is ABV, and they're both stouts. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not they comparable in chocolate. flavor. There's chocolate like, in there. That's yeah, it, but, but chili and coffee and peppers and all. And then that. the dragon's milk has the bourbon in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I have to stick with the nine. I would have given. I prefer. I would have given milk dragon's milk at nine five if it was just fuller bodied. I think when you yeah. barrel age something, it has to be fuller. It has to be a little bit more. Let them have some. Syrupy. Like if you're barrel aging it, it should come out and taste like it's got some pump, yeah. some punch to it. Yeah. And I, I, think I think that's the only reason I'm docking the dragon's milk from being I, higher. I think they offset. I think they're they're a nine, for me, but dragon's milk gets my gets my vote. For, okay. Uh, better of the two. So let's go, actually speak of drags, but let's let's dive back, see if it's warmed up a bit. Let me cleanse my palate from the chilies. All right, wow. All right, so anyway, warmer. Warmer. I like it. Way more bourbon, hands down. More boozy, kind of like the. Uh, now bourbon it wins out. Now it wins out. Warm dragon's milk is a nine five. No, I t- no. Nine, nine three. Four. It's. Almost as good as Warren Bourbon County, but not quite there. Yeah, it's a nine three for me. Yeah, it's re- it's a lot better though. I think last year's Bourbon County was a was a home run. Oh yeah, I'm saving it. Yeah, I thought that was a home. I run. I thought about bringing it. and I was like, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say this that. is this <laughs> is almost as good as last year's Bourbon County. Yeah, and then uh, 2015. Correct. You're, you're yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to let the Prairie Bomb warm up a little bit too, just to see how. Uh, that pairs off. I'm gonna finish this dragon milk, man. Definitely an upgrade. So what? What you want to go light? You want to keep with the dark? And don't say. Hey, man! To me. That's it's your birthday. God damn it! It's your Micah Palooza. All right, so I want I want to change up the flavors here. I know we've been drinking nothing but darker beers, minus the Dorothy and the IPAs. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do one of the Miami yeah, yeah. Brewing. Let's I've had do... them. They're good. Well, I haven't had either of the ones you have. I'm looking, I'm looking in the in the in the chest here. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Wheat beer. Wheat, a wheat beer. We're gonna change it up. I almost pulled out the uh, coconut ale, but oh, that's a good one. We should do that. What you want to do that one? I don't know if we want to do it now, but we have that kind of imperial stout taste in our mouth, which m- would probably pair really awesome with coconut. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so we're su- we're substituting. Mike, make an edit. We're gonna do Miami Brewing. <laughs> Coconut, big rod, coconut ale in a can. Let me read for you. Read it. <sighs> okay. Government warning. According, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> According to California, it's going to cause cancer. All right. 
Uh, da, 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 da. Well, this is cool to know. I'm sure it is on all their cans, but our craft beers are inspired by the eclectic flavors and diverse cultures found in Miami and the Florida Keys, which I've been in South Florida, very eclectic and diverse, so I can see why they want to <laughs> well, say that's that. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah, it's about every kind of person oh, man, and David every person ever. All right, let's go. Let's go. David, join the show, man. Hop on. Hop on. You know, I can't talk, but... Yo, you're sitting down, man. Sit down. You're talking. All right. You can just try beers, and we'll ask you for ratings as you yeah. go. I just want to speak in the mic when you do. All right. So Big Rod. Red Dave. Big Rod is a crisp blonde ale with notes of coconut, caramel, and vanilla. Finish is dry with subtle sweetness in your mouth. This, <laughs> yeah, I, had it, yeah. I said in your mouth. Out of It just made in it sound dirty. This delicious golden ale has a smooth mouth feel and is perfect uh, for fishing. Or a hot day on the beach. Okay. So we're drinking a coconut beer. To be honest, the, the description already makes me think it's going to taste like suntan lotion, which is a bad thing to get. But you pair coconut and beach and fishing, I think suntan lotion. So You would. I hope you I'm would. wrong. So we're joined by by my Bowegans drink mate, Dave. Never been on the Dave? show, but Dave, right. this is Hollywood. Or Jeff. Jeff, this is this is Red Dave. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only gonna take a little bit so we can give Dave some. So this is Dave. I don't know if you, I don't know what you caught or didn't catch, but uh, this is Miami Brewing Not Ale. Do we want to give a house pour or should we just finish it off? Let's just finish. it <laughs> I gave them all three Toppling Goliaths, so I think they're good. <laughs> so uh, I never had any beer. Miami Brewing. Exciting. <sighs> this is, we're about to pop my Miami Brewing. Hey. That's still a thing. Popping cherries. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, not for you anymore, you 28 year old <laughs> fuck. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad good, you said good that. luck trying Is it to. Bad that you're still popping cherries at 28. Yeah. Good. Good luck trying to find them. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I have a story after the show to tell you guys. <laughs> so this one <laughs> smells like sudden <laughs> tan lotion. It smells kind of weird. I do like Miami Brewing. I've had a handful of their beers, and they're really good. So uh, their Miami Weiss is great. Super awkward. That is it's awkward. almost suntan lotion-y. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Dave? Ooh. That's a, I've never smelled that before. I don't I don't like their aroma at all. Well. It's weird. It's like a pineapple and a coconut had sex in a, in a suntan lotion bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but what came out? This did? The, yeah. This this they came out. So aroma is is awkward. So let's go into the taste. Yep. My fears just came true. What the fuck, man? We we're all quiet. That just that drinks so like suntan lotion. Oh my god. Have you tasted? It's so lotion? bad. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, have you ever been like, to the I, beach? I can't really I just compare it to suntan. Well, I guess, okay. If it well, you can imagine from mouth. the smell what you would imagine that it tastes like. You know, like when you smell somebody's fart and you kind of think like, man, I think I just tasted it a little. <laughs> <laughs> was that ketchup and onions? <laughs> so I was working. I got to tell this story. I was walking. I let one. This is years ago at where I still work. And I was like, oh, man, I got to fart. So I like I farted. And the guy I was working with, uh, shout out to Mario. I don't even know if he was. Hey, to Mario. Me. What's up, Mario? Like, hey, We're man. telling that story when he, he goes, farted he goes, on he you. He goes, did you fart? And I was like, yeah. He goes, that smells like Taco Bell soft tacos. And I was like, no, that's what I ate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Three soft tacos at Taco oh, Bell. Oh, yeah. I feel like I can always identify what exactly is digesting in my stomach from my farts. Yeah. So, new, I know. new slogan, Mike's three soft tacos. <laughs> New so this yeah. this taste this tastes exactly like I'd imagine suntan lotion to oh, taste, yeah, which is bad. Kind of, uh, which is really bad. Big Rod's like a big letdown, man. I, yeah, I will say this though. In it. I'll say this. I, Miami I've Brewing. had three of their beers, and all three of them were really great. So this is definitely going to be their worst offering. I don't know if it's literally and I just woke up, but I don't mind the taste. It really? You the just coconut woke up. is actually pretty strong. Coconut's really strong. It's just the wrong kind of coconut to me. But I also, I, I think, uh, I think that I'm torn. I think the coconut plays to a dark beer better than a blonde. Correct. That would hundred percent agree. If that was in a porter or something. 
that I also, I just, I, I really can't get over the fact that it smells so much like suntan lotion and then tastes like I would imagine it tasting. It's a weird beer. And, I'll give you the smell. The smell is weird. And I just think, uh, the taste yeah. like, I, like I said, Miami, Miami Weiss is great. I've had their IPA. I forget what it's called. Uh, I have really no fucking, great. I have no fucking idea. Really good. I've me. had a bunch of their beers. They're really great. And if you're going to miss the gimmicky beer is the way to miss. Like they missed on a beer that was clearly like we're appealing to this coconut craze, but we want to do something different with it. It's a gimmick. They probably sell a crap load of it. But I I don't know for sure, but I think this big rod came out before the coconut craze happened. So I, Miami brewing. New craze in general. Like Miami, Miami brewing big, very quickly. Right. Little man's hungry. He wants some coconut suntan you want some lotion. Beer, man? <laughs> oh, coconut? it's okay. We can't even hear him on the mics. He's fine. Oh well, if we do, it's whatever. He's Adds authenticity the to the show. Yeah, I babysit him and edit at the same so time. So I'm going to say so the same thing. Actually, the taste, it, the taste, as appalling as it is to my to my mind, I can actually drink this beer. I can drink it. Like, yeah, I, I can drink it. I don't want to smell it. Though. You know what I, it reminds I, I was, me of? This is so hoping. bad. You know what it reminds me of? Bud Light Lime. <laughs> so bad that I'm saying this about a real know. brewery, but I, this is... I don't know. I wouldn't go that far. It's it's so a, appalling to like a beer like that, but like if I was on the boat, I could drink this beer. <laughs> You're on that boat by yourself. <laughs> usually I am, and I'm usually catching I, I, sailfish down in Stewart, the happiest seaside town in the country. I fell into the hype. I saw it, and I was like, I like coconuts. I hear good things about MI. Miami Brewing. Uh, and I bought it strictly based off hype. And I was expecting, more, like, one thing Ooh, I've learned all, no, just now. No, I just took another sip. It's bad. One thing I just learned with this beer, coconut is not a good ingredient alone. You have to have something else. And then two, Chocolate. It's a lot. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Cocoa nibs. It's a lot better in darker beers than lighter beers. Hands Way down. better in darker beers. Hands down. It definitely would have been better. In you a cannot beer. make a beer that only has coconut. Okay, I took another sip all. and it's really bad. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go right into my score. I'm gonna poo poo on this. <laughs> poo poo. We're gonna poo We're gonna poo poo. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna poo poo. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Six point five, the lowest score I've ever given a beer on the show. I also haven't had Billy's Chili yet, which <laughs> on the show. is gonna be the worst. Wait, worst. wait, wait. I just now remembered that we had a deal for when we, we hit when we hit a certain number of Facebook follows. David. Okay, oh. I gotta tell you this story. And I bought you a Billy's Chili's you to lost chug. That deal, then. I did. Well, and I, it's, it's not the fact that I lost; it's how I lost. I said I would chug something bad too. Right. So Jeff got me a Billy's Chili's out of a joke because he knows how much I hate it. Yeah. Which is fine. Straight. And I was like, all right. It was two hundred, right? At, yeah. We were at one ninety nine likes on Facebook, and I was like, for two hundred, I'll fucking chug it. Hey, right David. Now. I have Hop on. five. I have five likes on Facebook, and three are pending. Um, you are famous. I, I don't even know. What is this? What is Boston's this famous. Is this I didn't know you work out of Jacksonville. Ale works out of Jacksonville. Intuition, Intuition Ale works, works out of Jacksonville. Uh, under dark. The, um, our bottle share for tonight is Wax Cap. Any beer oh, has to be Wax Cap. Wax Cap. Okay. So, That's a good go. idea. You guys cool. share it. Let me hey, know guys. Um, David has been kicking around the idea of doing his own podcast Fuck soon. that. And so <laughs> well, I I'm making it official now so that he has to do it. All right, so listen, I would not do my own with podcast Outlaw. if I could be here with Outlaw. And we could find Remember out Mike Outlaw? Sufficiently for all of us involved. This new job sucks. I mean, it's good. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, where do you he got a bigger boy. He got a bigger boy <laughs> job. I can tell because it, he's wearing button downs office, instead of sweatshirts man. now. So you can't travel around They're anymore. Just be hating. <laughs> So you don't drive around looking for beer anymore? No. No, I didn't drive around looking for beer. <laughs> yeah. I just happened to find beer. Uh, it was yeah, like whatever. I, okay. I was driving around yeah. and I just found He was beer. driving around doing his job <laughs> yeah. and yeah. happened I'm to find so beer. Doing his job in the liquor store, out. yeah. You're a public figure now. Oh, bo, bo, bo. Sit in the office and you sit in your Ivy League tower. Fuck off. <laughs> you know? So, so what would be shit. a better time and day? Uh, no, I, don't I, tell me Friday. Well, you know, honestly, we could do Thursday. Him? I should just start requesting. To get can out we of have work outlaw? Early. Can we have outlaw back on but the show instead we, of you? We need to establish like a set. <laughs> outlaw time. Mike, dude, Mike Outlaw won't even come to the bottle shirts. Like, I'm gonna quit drinking and then does like six Mike Hard Mike's Hard's lemonade. <laughs> no, 
so much plural. Mike's plural hard lemonade. I've had a couple beers. <laughs> Likes. Yeah, he does like six my Mike's, Mike's hard lemonade. And he's like, I'm not drinking anymore. I'm just drinking Mike's. What the fuck? <laughs> If you guys can see everybody's expression at the table right now, <laughs> that's worse yeah, than like, that's worse than craft sodas. Yeah, he, just, he, just <laughs> he used to drink Sparks, man. That was oh, beer. How did you get him involved in this bottle share? He brings good beer. He does. Mike Mike got involved in it because he wanted to be the cool guy. Oh. Okay. So then he just started like, oh, I'll fucking buy a beer and trade it off, you know. So. He's. I mean, he gets good stuff for somebody he who does. drinks Mike's Hard Lemonade. And, 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 but that's his go-to. <laughs> that's his go-to. We all have our go-tos. Bud Light. You know. Yeah. Bud Light. For you, it's Schopenhauer Co- grapefruit. No, it's Coors, <laughs> Coors Light actually. <laughs> no, for real. All right. Yeah. So I got to bid you adieu. Uh, Under Dark by Intuition Ale Works. I wasn't shaking your hand. I was presenting. I was presenting. I thought you were but, giving me like oh, the so old. Cute. What are you guys like? 18, oh 1800 France right now? Yeah, you're yeah, like yes. that. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm actually. Super gay. It was my fault. <laughs> yeah, I know who I'm was. considering suspenders. I'm actually thinking <laughs> of bringing it like, back. I'm, I'm like, like hipster. What the like, fuck? Well, I'm pointing out the glass. He put his hand in front of me like he was pointing at the glass, but it looked like he was reaching for a handshake. But I was like. I don't uh, know how to shake your hand, so I did the little like French French Rebel, they, Marie Antoinette. <laughs> yeah. They can't see. They can't see. What I did is I put my hand out flat with the back of my hand facing the table and my palm of my hand facing up. And Jeff, and I'm presenting the beer. I'm like pointing at the beer, and Jeff reaches over and just grabs my hand, not in a normal hand like a lobster way. claw. He grabs the outside of my hand like l- gently, like a lobster claw. Yeah, that would be a good. Gently. It's just like. Eh. And, and it's, I'm not shaking your hand. I'm presenting the beer, guys. So you act like we don't I hold hands every time you're at the oh, yeah. table. I can't wait to edit this section right here. Stop. <laughs> this is the See best how much you ever. blow out of context. Yeah, right. Oh I'll go find a picture that looks like that now. Oh hey, God. man, I could either be Alex lobster clawing your dude, hand or I, I could be at lobster Slow clawing jerking. your knee. I got to tell you something. You can get Mr. Krabs. <laughs> yeah, Mr. I gotta Krabs. Tell don't say right anything that's going to get me in trouble. No, no, no. Okay. How's your wife? Dude, I was going to go I saw your wife today. I talked to her today. She's just so hot. It's just so fucking hot, dude. Your wife? Yes. I think. I thought you were looking at Jeff when you were saying that. Love you guys. <laughs> Bye. All right, so. That mic's the, off. Okay. Where the, what the fuck just happened? We got David we got Boston. David. Boston being Boston. Takes everything, just fucking stirs what did he it around. Us? What did he just say he brought us? I don't remember. Intuition it's under something. under something. Under dark. Under dark. Out of Jacksonville. What? Out of Jacksonville. Out of Jacksonville, yeah, right. We share glasses here, David, because uh, I like it. AIDS is AIDS, you know what right. I'm saying? I like it. Someday. I like it. I like it. I like it. I don't think it's that great, but I like it. I think what we have here is better, minus the big rod. It's better than the coconut. That's what I just said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's pretty. Shitty. Um, so the coconut, what'd you give it? Uh, a six five. Okay. A below I'm gonna, average. I'm gonna very well, much. Out of 10. Right? Yeah, it's one. It's uh, zero through ten with decimals. I'm going to uh, um, people. We give people headaches, and I'm I, gonna I, I get poo joy poo, out of poo, it. poo 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 so I, I on poo on this beer. Lowest beer I've ever rated on the show, Big Rod, six point five. So you're in the D range, right? I'm in the, I'm in the middle D. Yep. Okay. I'm literally giving this beer an F. Okay. I'm giving this a five. Okay. I'm giving it a five. Why out don't you want to give the Big Rod a D? <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving. <laughs> I am giving <laughs> it <that> a, <laughs> I'm giving it an F because of the fact that it is just terrible. Don't want to even elaborate more than that. This is about as bad as well. Yeah. This isn't the lowest oh. score you've ever given. You gave a beer fuck off one time. <laughs> I did, but because it didn't have any spaghetti. I'm giving this <laughs> I'm gonna give this beer fuck off. Okay. Okay, so it's because you didn't have spaghetti, not because it was a bad beer. No, no, it, it's no, the it beer was, was actually it, okay. It was, it was, inge- it was, oh. it was enjoyable. It, was a, it just was not. It was a hey, that was also with, Prairie. We just well, had Bomb. Prairie and Brewfest. Right. Because you guys made an effort to correct me. Because I said Prairie. You're like, no, Mike, it's Brewfest too. Well, I'm going to give it a little higher. I'm going to give it in the sevens, like a 7.3. So but you I'll, think this is a C minus beer? I, I would drink it. I just okay. won't smell it. So, that's so there's it some people, there's, it's all subjective. I'm it giving is. this beer five slash. There are fuck definitely off. other beers I'd rather be drinking. It tastes but like suntan lotion. If I'm lotion. stuck with this, I'm okay. I'll be okay drinking this. Miami, if you brewery. guys, you have great yeah, beers. This one's, this one's just not one not, for me. Yeah, not one. Um, we have a little bit of bomb left. So we're we're gonna revisit the Prairie Bomb Warm. We we we've been holding off. Ugh. Oh, I just took the last of that, and I'm glad I'm never gonna oh, try God, that beer damn. again. I'm okay. I think we're gonna stick with. <laughs> Wanna stick with MI? Miami Brewing. 
I like now that we just doo dooed on their beers, I feel like we owe them yeah. some good reviews. Yeah. We're not fucking sellouts. Fuck that. I'm just kidding. We are, we're totally sellouts. <laughs> we're such sellouts. <laughs> My name's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, if you pay me enough money, I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You Fuck would. that. We don't do that. In, in reality, so, we just doo dooed on a beer from a brewery that I really so like. So. from the bottle, David. We haven't drank any of it. Well, I mean, we've drank it, but not from the bottle. So that's warm. Dude, look at this guy. Straight for the warm prairie bomb. He's crushing the bomb. Oh my! <laughs> Doesn't like it. You like the coconut, but the you don't like the bomb. I have a thing against stouts right now. Oh, uh, you I can't be hating one. on the best flavor. Hey, you gave me a, ah, yeah. it was warm. What do you mean? That's the best kind. Exactly. <laughs> warm stouts are the best stouts. And it's a coffee stout, huh? Nope, chocolate Is stout. It? Well. Coffee, Whoa. vanilla, so cocoa, and chili peppers. chili peppers. So I just have That's mine warm. The, uh, you get I just the have mine warm. Heat in you, there. Get, you get more pepper. A little bit more pepper. Which you, you probably don't like. I, I like no. it better. No. My no. score will still remain the same. I, I was going to say, there, there's, a, there's a, some heat to that. I, I mean, it's not hot. I want to make no, it clear. No. This beer is not it's hot It's definitely not me, like Billy's Chili. But you get the pepper You do. You definitely. You, you get that after. All right. That, that's the final taste. My score it's, remains the same. It's now an A caliber beer to me. I'm giving it a 9-1. It now no. makes it to the, to the A caliber to me. I, I, it is an A beer. It is. It, it's, it is well known as an A beer. Well, I, I just didn't want to give it an A. Right. But okay. I... I I'm, I'm giving it. A I'm giving it a nine one now. Okay. I it it improves with warm with heat. It always anything warms up in an imperial stout and it tastes better. Except for 2014 the chocolate, bourbon, the which the I chocolate, didn't like. The chocolate in the warm prairie bomb is like tastes cheap. Oh, it's definitely not that. It's prairie artisan. They don't do that cheap shit. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep mine at nine. Um, it's just you, you're getting more. You get more flavors of it, warm compared to cold. So um, the, the flavors do stand out. I don't have much to compare to because you made, man, a, you made the grossest stouts. face to that. Which is understandable, dude. This isn't a beer for everybody. Right. This is a beer right. that... We're not judging you. Me, personally, I'd okay. probably give it in the six. Like if you want to know how, how... God, 6.8. You want to know how well this ah. beer is taken by the general public? Prairie Bomb? Go for it. Lay it on me. Beer Advocate score, which is not the most accurate score no, because we should be pretty, going off... We should be going biased. off... Yeah, it's really... Yeah. We should go off the bros. Well, the bros don't have a score for this beer, okay. but it's 99 on Beer Advocate. Wow. I don't agree with that at all. I don't either. Well, I don't either. I don't think it's that no, great, no. but it is It is an A beer for sure, especially for sure. warm Absolutely. A beer. Absolutely. It is, I agree with it that. is in the top. I suppose if, if I compare it to other beers. stouts I've had without bias, it's definitely up there as yeah. it would be good. Me personally, I am just against stouts right now. So, That's, I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I and mean, we always usually, well, not today because it's just it's Michael Palooza, so we're just drinking. But usually, we'll yeah, give like a, we'll give an enjoyability score, and then we'll give a style score. So it's like if you, for him especially, because he didn't like IPAs or citrus or like. Half the shit we try is like something that offends Mike's palate. <laughs> that is, that's not a third. Okay, a third a of third. the shit we try offends Mike's palate. So we always make him give a style score. That's where that it started makes, from. Was yeah, that you know, makes sense. Mike, what's your personal preference, and then what would you give the beer sub- uh, objectively? Mm-hmm. Because I kind well, of poo pooed on saying, Ryan like, Parker's if I try to be, you know, unbiased, when he was right next to me. <laughs> the stout's not too bad. I hate and and it was good. I hate citrus. This beer is a fucking. 8.2. <laughs> and then and then I brought it. You know, I brought that same beer in, in a yeah, crowler I still later. Like I it. liked it, man. I still like it. I still have I mean, my... It's, it's a good saison, but you have to like citrus. And I'm mm-hmm. not... I don't like citrus. Yeah. This is not a new... This is not new for... It's okay. He's from New Jersey. I, I would take that over a stout. He likes, like, uh, spray car- tans and sweaty berries. armpits and... Fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's Dave, from Jersey. I'm a Yankees fan. I know, but fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> what do you What do you feel like drinking, David? What's your What's your What style are you digging now? Because I have almost essentially a little bit of everything. Well, like pretty barley much, wines. Pretty much. Up. Do you like, have a barley one? I, I would be okay with wine. pretty much anything. What? The bomber. Except for I bitch, I showed you. Oh, I didn't know that was a the barley human, wine. Yeah, it's a coffee barley wine, dude. Why? Are, well, that's like eighty dollars a it's, bottle, though. I paid five bucks for it. Oh, never mind. So, it was, it was so you were lying to me when you said it was $80 a no, bottle. No, this whole cooler is like $80 worth of beer. Oh. Right. Well, it's Michael Palooza. five bucks. It's Michael Palooza. I know, but you have to work tomorrow <laughs> or today. I do, yeah. I mean, but, like, who's going to tell me I can't? Right. David, all right, Dave, what, what, what are you feeling? What uh, solid no, beer? You want well, IPAs? You want wheats? You want slow jerks? What do you want? Well, all right. So if we order it, Dry, jer- dry jerks, bottom, slow jerks. <laughs> yeah, no lotion. So if I order it, stouts are at the bottom. 
IPAs are second from the bottom, well, I guess, and then anything else. Is I guess fun. Tiny doesn't make that cut then, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> a 14% Belgian stout. <laughs> All right, so stouts and IPAs you don't want. I can do with IPAs more than I can go, go with stouts right now. You got any, like, uh, sours in there? Ooh. I, do, I fucking wish, dude. Right. Oh, my God. Um, Need more sours, that's for sure. Anybody want to try what I think is is the best, uh, one of the best pale lagers? It's on tap right now. I can go grab us some samples. Narragansett? No. Ballast Point Longfin. We just had the Dorothy. We talked about how good it was for the style. Ballast Point Longfin is on tap. You want me to go or grab a little bit? Or we could get Shark, shark Bait Mango Wheat Beer. Let's do that, Ooh. and then I'll grab the Longfin. Mango okay. Wheat. We need glasses too, man. We're all out. We have water. Rinse right. them out. Rinse them out. We're so unprepared, and I fucking love it. <laughs> I brought, like, 15 glasses to the yeah. table. I just didn't know we were going to be doing all of this. We're not, we're, we're not doing all of them. I've only, used, I've only used two glasses. I keep rinsing mine out. Yeah, I don't have water, and right. I still don't. Every week, I just forget to bring water. Oh, and you have cold water, huh? Yeah, man, cold water better than warm water. I left mine in the car. I would have uh, brought it in. Yeah, water's like a lager. It just the off flavors come out as it warms up. <laughs> you like Coors Light water? <laughs> I don't know why you're giving me shit when you drink Bud Light. Dude, I fucking love Bud Light. Aren't Bud those Light, those waters waters almost bought an 18 pack of Bud Light just to fucking bring here. Aren't those so flavored like, waters? Right. That's what I'm saying, bro. I mean, as much as many times have you said, A B suck it. I fucking love Bud Light. That's you're I such a hypocrite. No, no, not at all. We drink beers that are good, right, Jeff? Correct. It doesn't matter if AB bought Breckenridge as long as Vanilla Porter stays the same. I'm still gonna fucking buy it. That's actual. That's well, like that might be word for word quote for me. <laughs> as long as Bud Light stays the same, I'm always gonna fucking buy it. I or, think it or tastes Bush like Light crap. If I'm tailgating. Now Bush Light, I can drink. I tailgate with that. Yeah, I'll shotgun a Bush Light. Throw go, some Red Bull in there and some Jaeger. Go UCF Knights. Shotgun that shit. <laughs> That's all right. So we're gonna. We're I saw gonna, an awesome picture. You're talking about UCF night. Sorry to derail you here. It. Saw an awesome That's picture. I actually do, right? sent That's you to. <laughs> I actually sent it to you because I thought it was hilarious. So there was UCF Knights all painted on these guys' chests. Four guys at a tailgate at UCF, <laughs> yeah. but they decided to stand out of order because we didn't win very many games last year, <laughs> and it just said "fuck," <laughs> and I was like, "That is awesome." That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So this is oh, what the fuck are we drinking? What is that? Mango wheat. Shark bait. We're drinking the shark bait. So shark bait. Ooh ha. Ooh ha. One of my favorite movies of all time. So this is a mango. It's wheat, a wheat beer with mango added. Isn't Finding Dory coming out soon? It is. I'm really pumped about it. Couldn't be more pumped. Let's have an episode from been? the movie theater. How many years? <laughs> How many years has it been since ne- Finding like Nemo? Like seven or eight. I don't, I don't know, really? man. I, I think it's longer than that. I don't know. I'm mean Girls just celebrated 10, 10 years last year. God, this, I'm, well, I'm going to skip ahead. This smell is fantastic. Not. Hey, man, we're trying to talk about Mean Girls right now sorry. and Finding Nemo, all right? <laughs> I'm sorry. We're in Central Florida. We should be talking about Disney more. God, oh. <laughs> exactly. we got to hit the controversial issues. And Miami Brewing. A, uh, redeem themselves? Redeem themselves, yeah. The smell on that mango is fantastic. Well, going off last time, the smell sucked, but yeah, I like the taste, this. so. That. Don't it's actually, a stout. It's, it's what is that? Terrapin, Muhu, whatever the fuck. Muhu Kiato. Or no, yeah. it's Tiramisu. Which is a stout. Is it a porter a, or a stout? It's a stout. It's a Tiramisu, though. It's really sweet. It's all right. I'll it chase it down good. with this. Yeah, so drink it. It's Tiramisu. We it take tastes care, like tiramisu. We take care of our, our, our guests. It's all right. That one's much better. It's sweeter. A lot sweeter. It's, I like it a lot. It's not nearly as strong as the other one. No, no, not even close. This is a, this 11% uh, or something. Finding Nemo is 12 years. 12 years? Sounds about right. Fuck. <laughs> right? <laughs> it feels Fuck. like yesterday, man. <laughs> Finding Nemo is six years away from being legal. You know what's, <laughs> you know what's crazy is I watched it like last year and still love it. I do too. My girlfriend, when I was 23, got me a Finding Nemo birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> and I did not. I didn't even think that was bad. I was like, I love Finding Nemo. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Can we make that our shirt? <laughs> Finding Nemo birthday. Oh my cake. God! Yes. <laughs> It at least could be my shirt. That's all it is. It's just a Finding you Nemo one birthday. Personal. You have I'll no. Do you understand so how awesome Finding oh Nemo was? God. 
Think about the intricacies that went into that movie. Oh my god. The Maine lobsters have New England accents. <laughs> That's so smart. God. Stop. Stop. And it's 12 years old. Ooh. Does anybody ever see a sea turtle picture, video, anything, and not automatically assume his voice is like, you said totally rock, bro. <laughs> like, no. Finding Nemo yeah, changed bro. your opinion of yeah. sea turtles forever. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it definitely changed it on sea turtles. What the fuck the is this jelly show man, show so much. the jelly man taking on the jellies. Yeah, bro, taking <laughs> on the jelly man. <laughs> Dude, Crush was the original stoner sea turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I want the shittiest looking Finding Nemo cake on the shirt. Like, that's, that's all it is on the front. I'm gonna Google pictures of Finding Nemo cakes right now. All right, now. so back to uh, back to Mango back, Wheat. They probably the have Mango Finding Dory shirts ready for you too. Fuck that. So. Did you smell it? The, the, the I did. It smells, smell awesome. smells great. It smells candied mango. But like I was saying, the other one smelled bad. But I yeah, like they the beat taste, you on so. your mango lit. They beat you on your passion fruit mango. See, I had passion fruit though. This is just mango. They beat you though. No, I. I no. Think, okay, first off, yours was great. I'm pissed off that I accidentally poured all of mine at the Land Craft Beer Festival. Point number one. Point number two is. I think mine's was equal, if not slightly better than the J Dove's passion fruit. Way better. What, what the fuck they called it? I don't like that beer. Third off, don't even f- compare my homebrew to this one because it's missing half of my ingredients. <laughs> God dang it, Jeff! <laughs> Go home, you're drunk. <laughs> I can't. I'm the mid bartender. <laughs> <laughs> So, I can't compare it to yours because I never, I did not have. Get I know. Shit, God, I you, ha- try yours. You, you, you missed no out. Idea. His was very, very, you have no very idea how good. Off I was when I found. To be out, honest with you, mine the away. fact that Preston said that your beer is repeatable, you should enter that into the homebrew festival, because it's honestly the the it is the best wheat beer I've had. I want to. I wouldn't go that far. You got. I mean, let's be honest. A little bit oh, of luck was involved in that because no, it was yeah, your oh, first beer. Yeah, but beginner's luck. It sure. was it was incredible. It was so good. I would actually take away some of the fruit. I, I would not. I, I wouldn't have I, changed a thing on that beer. I don't know if I would call I it luck. Was, though. I think it was too much. You beat Preston at his own but, game. But see, I he, think with, with his, his own beer, he chose some ingredients that were just obviously he was probably going to lose. One, well, no, star fruit is not an obviously lost ingredient. Well, I don't know. Star cool. Compared to mango, though, and pa- well, you guys have already had this before. It's a vanilla eclipse. Vanilla done. eclipse, done. Did it. We love All it. All of it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, uh, I think we talked about the uh, marshmallows. God, this smells so fucking good. It was like it was like oh. it's like if you're eating Lucky Charms, you eat all the oats, you leave all the marshmallows. The milk has absorbed a lot of the flavors, and then that's all you're Smell getting that. left. So I, I always enjoy, buy gentlemen. six boxes of Lucky Charms Fuck and yeah, sort them dude. over the course of like six hours and just make one giant box of marshmallows. Why don't they just do that? Why don't they just sell mar- uh, Lucky Charm marshmallow, you know, candy marshmallows? You know, something about like Sign me something up. like Speaking America want, being the most oh obese God. country in that the world. That has one of my favorite fucking beers of all time, the uh, Eclipse. I'll bring a Cheers from Cigar City, which is a 50-50 blend mm-hmm. of... A bourbon well, barrel aged wrist mixed I'll with a uh, big first. sound, which is bourbon barrel aged. Right, 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 right. It just tastes like mar- or it just smells it's, like marshmallows. It's nothing but marshmallows. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Can I definitely at least. One that's one of your dude, favorite beers. That's, that's a nine seven for me. That one right there is a nine. It does have a Lucky Charms taste at the yeah. end, which I kind of think is gimmicky in a little bit, and it I think like it knocks stout, it points. Right? That's a stout, yeah. That tasted good. You see, you hate, oh, you're hating yeah. on stouts. <laughs> the guy's hating on stouts, but he probably only had bad yeah, stouts. Here's good. the thing. Well, no, I had some good stouts that really let me down lately. But um, on the way here, I was I, I, marshmallow is something I'm looking for right now, though. A marsh, marshmallow flavored beers. So that is exactly what I was. I was googling it while driving here. That's like, really I'm trying funny to find, like, and ironic. Good, Marshmallow flavored beers, because I I want something close to the sweet potato casserole, Ooh. which is Since, amazing. Because can't get I, it. At I the like moment. the blueberry cobbler from our boys down at Funky like, Buddha. Yep. I ran out of it, and it's like I need more. I need more that vanilla Those beers and are marshmallow tap, flavor. And I'll die with saying that. You're right. Way better on tap. The the blueberry way cobbler on draft. Way better on tap. 
marshmallow beers right now I'm looking for. I'm looking for something like amazingly marshmallow flavored. I don't know why I'm craving well, like just marshmallow flavored beer. And then just he some. just brings up a stout with marsh that's marshmallow flavored. So as much as I'm against stouts right now, that tasted great. That's so nice that goes to show. That eclipse. Mike, how now, can you let's judge go, okay, let's go back let's to go Miami Brewing. Nose is fantastic. Mango, mango, mango. It definitely smells great. And I love the taste. I like this a lot better. A lot better. Than yours. No, than the... um, (laughs) The coconut. The coconut. Oh, so it's not an F beer or a fuck off beer. No. I would give this one... A... A 7-7. Stylistically, for a wheat beer, I'm giving this an 8-5. Really? Yeah. And I don't even like mango. It's great. Well balanced, super light, good flavor, no off flavors at all. Great body, great nose. I think it's awesome. Eight five. We well, already thought the coconut was pretty good, but this is <laughs> definitely like for me the the, the flavor. Of the You're coconut so in the minority good. on that. So, like, it's, yeah. I am. I am on the You're coconut. On but one. but on this one, this one's definitely better for sure. It's better and it smells great too, which is definitely a much better plus. So I would be closer at his range, like an eight three. It definitely is in the eights. Stop poo pooing on their beers, man. Mangoes, mangoes hey, are so one dimensional. I mean this this beer would be this beer would be Upstairs, better if they added added another ingredient to it. But stuff next to the I mean, if there was like mango and honey, I'd probably give it like an eight five. But mango by itself, it's like true. It, if, they, it was, so much. if it was like mango and passion fruit with something with, else. with like mango with something else, I think this beer would be easily a mid B. But for me, like there's so many good uh, there's so many other great wheat beers. I think there's something beautiful about its simplicity. Right. I mean, I gave it a C plus. It's a it's above style. Like I don't want it to have. Better. I don't want it to have too much. Nowadays, there's like this freaking like even like Prairie Bomb we just had. It's an A beer, right? Freaking coffee, cocoa nibs, vanilla beans, and chili peppers all age. Like there's like nine ingredients in every beer now. Like, like I that, think something like to me that doesn't matter. It's all about the alcohol. I'll just say that's all not always a plus to have a ton right. It's of not always a plus. like simplistic mango is all you're tasting, and you taste a lot of it, and it's good. And it's well balanced and it's made right. Now they could easily, like you're saying, get away with combining it if they want to in the future. Combine their mango this design with something else. I bet you it would be much better. And, and but the mango for how simple it is, if you're just looking for mango, it's great. But I feel like we're bad. I feel like not that we're bashing not, it. We're definitely not bashing, bashing it. You gave it a good all. score. No. But it's I feel like score. I feel like if this beer didn't have mango in it, it was just a wheat beer, right? With no with no extra ingredients, you'd probably give it the same score. So. Not saying it needs more ingredients, more different flavors when it's already adding a flavor to an existing style. I, I don't think it needs more of It'd anything. It probably drop because it wouldn't have the it wouldn't have the smell if okay. you take that mango uh, out. I'm about to, I'm <laughs> about to drop some education. There are certain fruits that do not go well in my experiences, in my opinion, well by themselves. Coconut, watermelon, and mango do not go good for me on my palate by themselves. Especially, wa- I think watermelon is the worst out of all of them. Watermelon, for as juicy of a fruit as it is, imparts only candied flavors like right. sour watermelon. So watermelon for sure. A- I'll a- agree there. Am I asking a list of twenty-five different ingredients? Absolutely not. But in order for you to make a mango or a coconut, something you have to add something else. Wheat takes fruit so well, so well. So why not add something else to make it more dimensional? Like apple, apple, honey, anything. It definitely would be better with an additional it would fruit. Be, wait, the the aroma is is an an a B plus. Is a like B plus. Apple mango would be cool. That would be really good. I mean, the mango is a B plus, but it's just mango by itself is not a sustainable beer, for, in my opinion. Mm. By All itself. right, we got more beers to come. We, we'll we'll do one more. We're running, running, more, we're long. running we'll long, but we can do. We'll it. do a little bit. We'll do one more. It's a two part episode, so you can right. stop at the break. I can take a pee break. Yeah, I'm talking I can do, listeners. I, I can do. I can do whatever. Yeah. David, what are you feeling? Hey, it's your birthday, man. So we've been doing a lot of dark beer. We did a couple weeks. Should we do that barley one? I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah! I'm thinking. That'd be a good finish. We're about to get fucked up. Damn, I have to work at 10. I have to work at 8. The the Belgian. The dogfish Belgian. Keep your dogfish heads. They're your faves. Let's rock that that freaking barley one. (laughs) 
Oh wow, that's a big bottle. So when I went, to I love barley wines because there is no like baseline for what they're supposed and to taste like. And you said that, and I was like, God, like I was editing, editing the episode, I'm like God, Jeff is fucking like spot on. There's no criteria for barley wines at all. You can make it whatever you want, and people are like, oh, this is fantastic. Arr. So I I went a couple, about a month ago, three weeks to four weeks ago. I went to Brew Hub because I was in Lakeland helping my mom broke her elbow, so I'm being a good son. And helping them with house chores, so I was like, "You don't have to convince our fans that you're a good person." I'm a, right. I'm a fantastic person. <laughs> Obscure, <laughs> but anyway, Smoke in the air. simple yet complex. Simple yet complex. So I was like, "It's to a point to where I have to, if I'm going anywhere out of town, I have to stop by the nearest brewery or liquor store to see what they got." Right. Well, so, it, it got one of know. the many colors a barley wine can have. So <laughs> I went to Brew Hub, and this bomber specifically, the Umatilla Coffee Barley Wine, was on sale for five dollars. I should have wow. brought you the freaking Hurricane Number no. Eight from Two Henrys, the freeze distilled ice box bomber. We'll do, that, we'll I have. do that, that alone is like it's special episode. It's a special. It's a we cool beer. Do, we could do an episode of just like unique beers. Yeah. This one was on sale, and they had they had another version of this same one on wild turkey, three different wild turkey barrels. For like twenty five dollars, and this is only five. And that was on sale for five bucks. Now this is eleven point four percent Umatilla coffee barley wine by Brew Hub in Lakeland. Color is very different. It's like a tea. I don't know, like an iced Ice tea. tea. It does Ice look tea, like yeah. a, a tea, definitely. And actually, the barley wine is darkish, like midnight. Yeah, it's a lighter barley wine, almost an amber Come red. On, Hang with us, bro. That, that smell, man. Amber red to brown. I'm almost getting a tobacco iced tea. smell. I get a, the same nose. I don't get what is like that a, is. Are you getting a tobacco yeah. smell? Yeah. I mean, I dip all the time, so I'm thinking it might just be that, but <laughs> it probably isn't. No, I'm getting that it smell. like a, like yeah, a tobacco. It's a weird, yeah, it's a weird aroma for what I am anticipating for the, coffee. But The smell reminds me of stouts. Like, it. Well, depending yes. on yes, I, I would. I give it you reminds that. me of yeah. the Prairie. Well, the high malt for sure. High malt. Closer to that. The other two stouts we've had so far actually weren't bad compared. Very to Very high malt, which for is me indicative of barley wine. Super high malt, which is going to give you that that caramelly sweet sweet nose. I which is why I think the nose is weird because it's a coffee barley wine, so you're getting that like bitter cut nose with the same sweet high malt backbone so you're like it's a little strange it definitely makes me think more of stouts especially with the coffee flavor is there vanilla in this mike i'm sure yeah uh, is so, there vanilla in this no probably not I, I, do, I literally have no idea i bought it and never even looked at the bottle i was like five bucks for that all right i'll take it <laughs> it's a big bottle for five bucks it's especially a bomber, comparing dude. the yeah. rest uh, like, comparing the rest were 20 okay wait i saw paranormal and something on here now i gotta read you this could, it could have been any beer i would have bought it just the fact something it's weird a bomber and it's five bucks I've heard of, I've heard of the Umatilla barley. Umatilla All right. So series. apparently, did you know? Did okay? I was gonna say, did you know there's a series of a series of beers for, to commemorate the first year at Brew Hub, which is this is one of them. Okay. Um, named for a legendary cemetery in Umatilla, Florida, we found ourselves drawn to the story. While we make no claims as to the paranormal nature of this brew, we will lay claim to the diverse excellence of its composition, roasted malts, and Pacific Northwest hops. Give this beer a complex, sweet, and spicy, and fruity character, which is then adorned with the exotic coffees, a something, a- a- acerola cherries, and Madagascar vanilla. I did okay. smell vanilla, dude. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know I that. still smell tobacco. In the aging process, we invite you to raise a glass and toast with us. This is just the beginning. So this is apparently inspired by a cemetery. Uh, which makes sense because there's tombstones and some weird kind of art of dead trees and ravens and shit all over the bottle. But uh, cool. I, I mean, I did smell vanilla. I'm glad that that is actually on the bottle. But that's that's an interesting kind of take on on doing a first series of beers right. sponsored by Umatilla the tobacco, Cemetery. Uh, smell you're getting is probably from the spicy notes or all the death dead people. Right. Well, the crazy <laughs> thing is the spicy it's notes. True. Darren, you're like ten minutes too late. No, that's bomb. That's bomb. Warm bomb. Warm bomb. So let's right, go well, into the, uh, the spicy the notes. I almost smell the same chili oh, that I smelled in the last one. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> one for the house. <laughs> okay. 
Radio, radio silence. That face, man. <laughs> this is a sour. Do you like my expertise on that? It's a sour, for sure. I smelt it, and I it's determined it's, that by it's smell, it's, really like sour it's a sour. <laughs> it does kind of smell like a fart. <laughs> it's me, it's me. Sour farts. It's me. It's a DAV to the I to the D. Why do you got whispered? That makes it so hard for me to, to edit. <laughs> shut, 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 shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Okay. Shut your mouth. Oh, my Super God. Super vinegary. Yeah. Real, real bitey. Not my favorite sour. Anyway. That oh smell, God. you can definitely tell it's a sour from the smell. He said there's blueberries in it. I did not taste a single blueberry in that thing vinegary at all. Vinegary is full. Let's get back to our Umatilla here. Okay. That is a strong sour. You Makes Matilla. you appreciate Canty on this one. Umatilla you, is... Uh, that one just depends on your palate. Uh, uh, I'm going to give it a... Uh, well, you, I didn't even try it already. I did try a tiny sample, just on nose though. It's it's it, I picked up on a lot of the flavors. I'm pretty impressed by the way it comes through. Well, never mind. We'll go back. Dude, it tastes like tea, man. I don't, I get a little coffee, but not. It's not noticeable. What the fuck is this? I get a ton of coffee. No, I get, I get so coffee. much coffee. Mm-hmm. Well. I don't get I've tea had plenty at all. of those coffee flavored uh, stouts at Hourglass, so this definitely reminds me of I those. I take it back. I do get I do get coffee, but I love this beer. Not not a whole lot. It almost reminds me of a stout, like initially, but when it goes down, it's you get the heat from the. Spices. I love this beer. It's almost reverse Prairie Bomb. It's like it goes like spicy to sweet. I you love did, it. You did you do get a lot of booziness in the very end? I'm not I'm not I'm not crazy about it. Really? I'm getting yeah. the heat at the end still. So I'm Same getting I'm though. getting like bitter up front with the spice, coffee middle, and then super sweet vanilla y finish that I love. Like I actually think this beer's great. No, I'm getting a lot of like a weird blend of like coffee and like tea. I'm getting the coffee f- ending with with the spices. Like the heat is getting yeah. me at the end. I'm that's all I'm, I'm I don't that's get all any I'm of that. I don't get any of that spe- that spicy at the end. I get it. I get it. It's like a cinnamon, nutmeg, like weird. Whatever they are using for it. the spices, like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the heat this. at the end on this one for yeah. sure. I'm surprised Same you don't like it. I think this is great. I definitely Beer is subjective. It, to a stout. It, it tastes very much like a stout. It's a barley wine, but it tastes like a stout to me. I hope everybody who has this hates it, and I love it. Everybody's gonna be like, "That guy sucks." We're never listening to this show again. They already say that. I, I know. I'm a joke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Jeff is full of knowledge. Yeah, funky, fuck? funky Buddha is an obscure beery. Um, <laughs> you can edit I, I, that out. I, I, I'm <laughs> I may not. Don't. <laughs> Tell me Funky Buddha. I'll Nobody go, knows I'll about Funky into, Buddha. I'll go into Tell the score on this one. I'm not. Oh. I, I'm leaning. I'm, I'm really digging a 7-2 on this. I'm not crazy about it at all. You Matilla Coffee Barley Wine. David, what are you thinking? I don't have very many, or very much barley wine experience to compare it to as far as barley wines go. But personally, right now, it's definitely a C minus. I I probably give it seven zero dot zero on the dot. Okay, seven zero for David. I give it a seven two. Jeff, you give it a nine what? Eight point six. Okay. Enjoyable. Love it. I think it's good. Definitely a B plus beer. You can have Need the rest of that plus. bottle if you want. I will absolutely have the rest of that bottle. I think it's I think it's awesome. I'm cool with that too. Genuinely think uh, it goes fine. from from spicy to sweet. I think it finishes with a good boozy backbone. I I'll like give it you a lot. that. Uh, the transition from sweet to, to spices is good, but it just I'm not. I think I think plus it's plus it's from a more us. reputable and well-known brewery than Funky Buddha. Oh. No comment. <laughs> Might not be for long. Oh God, let's not get into that. Right. <laughs> anyway, you have to edit out everything I say yeah, today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's that time again. It's the hashtag PIA, the plug it anywhere section of the Mike's birthday. I don't even know. I like beer palooza. Mike palooza. Mike palooza. The beer palooza. Whatever. Yeah. Same difference. So we always go with the guest first, David. You have anything to plug? Even though <laughs> you just kind of walked up. Right. You have anything? Anything to uh, give a shout out to? Uh, I Feel free to not. shout out the show. I, I, we well. don't do that enough. We're a show. <laughs> right? Shout. The best. 
I, I don't. I, I came up here unexpected, so. So Dave is not plugging anything. He's a spectator to right. the Prius game. Plug it anywhere or nowhere. Or nowhere. So Dave is taking the the good the good route of just, just watching. He'll watch. Step into the Prius and plug it in. Yep. <laughs> he's guard he's a, he's like the, the lookout for the Prius at gangbanging. <laughs> All right, I will plug the same plug. thing I plugged a lot of episodes now. This besides, is coming out in like two weeks. Besides Stuart, Florida. <laughs> being the Shout happiest Stewart. seaside town in the country, which you are, and I'm said earlier. from there, so Stewart obviously alone. I'm the happiest seaside human being in the country. No, I think you're the grumpiest person on the show. I might be. Granted, you're only you're half of the show. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will plug, like always, because it is now officially official. officially set and official, June twenty mother fifth, June twenty fifth. The fifth, twenty fifth, two five. It is in June. It has June. a two and a five. Two five. It will be our homebrew first annual homebrew festival, guys. I posted this thing yesterday. This is now going to be two weeks old by the time you hear this. But yesterday right. I posted our event bright online ticketing. ticketing. Oh, not even, not even the actual event on Facebook. I posted just the ticketing just information. Just buy your tickets here. Yeah, right. On Facebook. And within an hour and a half, I had eight homebrewers re- reserve their spots. That's awesome. We are going to have. I, I'm capping it. We've been we've been at two days now. We're already in the double digits for homebrewers. I'm capping oh, wow. it at sixteen homebrewers. So and you're already in the double digits. by this I you were time going for twenty. I, I I have no room for twenty. Okay. Okay. I have no. I'm a, okay. If I can figure out with the place next door to allow me to take their parking spots as well, I will do twenty. But in t- until I figure that out, I'm doing so sixteen. So far, we're at sixteen. Okay. But um, I'm gonna take people as reserves to to hold them and, and let them know within plenty of time if they can do it or not. But we're gonna work on it over the next week or so. But um, I assume with a homebrew, you'd have to figure that out pretty fast because they need the time to brew. They it. need to brew. So we're that's, we're two we're two we, and a half months out from the so event. Like, so that's yeah, but even then, two and a half, half months isn't that long. Oh, at, at, at this time. at this it's moment, they time. have almost all styles available to them. Right. So the other thing they really can't do are exotic like weird, sours like and weird sou- shit. Well, depending on the sour. But we are officially set for the twenty fifth. If you would if you would like to buy your ticket. It is going to be, like I said, 16 at the minimum home brewers, possibly 20 home brewers. It is $20 to come get unlimited samples from 3 to 6 o'clock p.m. on the 25th, which is a Saturday. $20 will get you unlimited samples. You'll get uh, the bar will be open. You can drink all day at the bar as well. You're going to be able to cast your vote as well as talk to your brewers, get to know what's in the beer, interact with actual people who love beer, brew beer, and have good insight on what you're actually drinking. You're going to get to give them tasting notes, help them fine-tune their craft. But you also get to vote on your top three home brews that are entered. The winning home brewer gets to brew a collaboration beer with Red Cypress that will be on tap at World of Beer Ultima and World of Beer UCF. And we're actually working on getting to be a WAB exclusive. It will also be on tap, by the way. Our friends at Red Cypress are going to put it in their tap room as well. And they are going to be our collaboration brewer. So it's going to be a really awesome beer. Red Cypress is freaking Red sick. Red Cypress is awesome. I'm so, a big fan. That's so we're going to be working a, with a them. Great reward right there, Ryan. Oh, we appreciate yeah. the sponsorship, man, because it's it's going to go really far. It's an awesome, awesome thing that we're doing. But, what um, is that? Bourbon barrel aged abominable winter ale. Okay. Okay. Good job. <laughs> All these dark um, beers, man. So we are. So we're doing that. It's twenty dollars. You can buy your tickets at the store. There's no problem with that. You can take. We take credit cards or cash at the store. If you don't want to leave the comfy the comfiness of your couch or bed, you can go on to Eventbrite, which is event b r i t e eventbrite.com. Go to the search bar, type in Wob UCF, and it'll come up. It's the first annual homebrew festival. You can buy your tickets online from the comfort of your house, and when you come in, you'll be ready to roll. So it's going to be an awesome event. Tickets available online. No excuse not to buy them. Twenty dollars for all you can drink for three hours from the homebrewers. Sick deal! It's gonna be really fun. Great event. Um, it'll be it'll be a good time. Yeah, uh, we'll be here for that. Jeff and at I will the bar be here. is uh, at the bar has their own beer entered in the contest. Actually, we're, we're entering our own beer. We're doing a, a I'll, I'll say I won't say the ingredients. But we're doing a cream ale. A cream ale. Cream ale. Um, and then we're we're dabbling about maybe doing a secondary beer for an added bonus. 
for to make it more of a value for people. It I'll won't be entered into the contest, but we'll have a we'll have possibly a, a beer. secondary beer. We'll have a second beer more that won't be that will not be entered, but it'll be more or less more more of value for so people can be inclined to buy a ticket, right? Because that's yeah. what's important. And, for us. and the cool thing about this, guys, is that. I kicked around a ton of ideas for this event. I didn't want to do a style-based event. I didn't want to do anything that was like a competition because that's right. that's not the point of this. The point is that we're going to celebrate the people who really love beer, the home brewers, the people who do this for love of the beer. They're not making money off it. It right. costs them money to brew these beers, but they love beer so much that they're brewing it for you and coming to showcase it for you. Styles are open. Anybody can brew any style. You're not going to be comparing only stouts. You're not going to be comparing only IPAs. If you come, I guarantee there will be many beers that you enjoy. There's going to be almost every style represented. It's going to be an awesome event. And I can already tell you just from the few people that I know personally who are brewing that there is going to be some really, dare I say, weird beer on the table that is going to be really fun and cool and different. That's what I'm going for. Weird beers. But I mean, it's it's a can't miss. I know there's there's a lot of things going on for people on Saturdays, but a twenty bucks, all you can drink for three hours. That's what craft beer is. I mean, we're doing this event. I know Jeff kicked around a, a couple months ago to me and and the Preston about him having this idea, and this is this and, idea is is one of a kind. Yeah. And and the fact that World of Beer and Ryan from Red Cypress and you know the show is to be a part of that is what the show is about. It's not about who's. Who necessarily makes a better beer? It's about pe- bringing people together and sharing what craft beer is. Yeah, guys, and also thank you, Preston, for really being kind of my my confidant on this, the person who I talked to to really help me fine tune this idea and get it going. Um, this is the first the first event like this in of World kind. of Beer. Yeah, in World of Beer, nobody has done anything like this within World of Beer. Um, and honestly, uh, they're looking at it. They, they want to know if this is a, they want to know the model. They want to know how it works to see if they can do this at other world of beers. So this is going to be, I mean, it's that, it's that cool and that different. Um, Preston really helped me out a lot with it. So from, from a home brewer standpoint, uh, I worked with him to, to really fine tune the idea and make sure that it, it made sense for the brewers and for the, for the guests. And, and to be honest with you guys, like, it's free to home brewers. If you're a home brewer, go ahead and, and, and message the WAB UCF. Uh, it's actually World of Beer UCF Area Facebook page. Shoot us, a, shoot us a message. By the time this airs, there's a good chance that we'll be full on brewers. But we might be able to still slide some people in here and there. Right. But if you guys want to participate in this event, it, it's open to the public. It's ready to go. Yeah, this would be kick-ass. And I'm, I'm extremely excited to be a part of this and to have an episode and to... To so what people are offering is going to be it's one of a kind. There's no no other event that's ever happened in this side of Orlando ever. But it's just it's it's going to be a really fun event. I really hope that you guys come out. Like I said, go to Eventbrite. It's B R I T E, not B R I G H T. I made that mistake when I was looking at it originally. It's B R I T E Eventbrite dot com. Just type in Wab UCF or or Homebrew Festival. It'll come up either way. Uh, and you can buy your tickets there. 20 bucks, all you can drink for a few hours. Great event to bring out girlfriend to, bring out your dad to, bring out family members to, bring out friends to. It's cheap, 20 bucks, all you can drink for three hours. And there's a vested interest for these home brewers. When if you really love beer, and you really want to give a home brewer a chance to do something huge, it's a great time for you to come out and vote for the guy that you're passionate about, and maybe give them the chance to have a beer on tap at. A few World of Beer locations, possibly the downtown and the Dr. Phillips and the Lake Mary locations. Definitely at our two stores at UCF and Altima, and definitely at the Red Cypress Tap Room. Yeah. So going into that, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug that same event. I know we went into great detail about it, so I'm not going to say much about it. But me and Jeff will be there. I'll be brewing a beer on behalf of at the bar. Two of them. Uh, one will be the cream will be entered in, and I'm doing a, a goza or a goose, whatever, however you want to pronounce it. As more of a uh, here, have a beer kind of beer. But here's yeah, a, here's a bonus for coming. Here's a bonus, yeah. So you know that's something we're gonna be. I'll be here for. Jeff will be here for. Ryan, oh, Ryan from Red Cypress, hopefully may be here. If not, someone from Red Cypress will be here. Somebody from Red Cypress will definitely. Um, be here. Yeah, dude. I mean, this show is all about craft beer and supporting local, and this this event is the definition of that. You know, come on out for twenty bucks. You drink unlimited beer for three hours with great food from the kitchen so on a saturday afternoon you can't really beat that deal at all anywhere for 20 bucks for three hours of drinking 
and you're doing everyone, all the homebrewers a favor and drinking their beer, leaving the tasting notes, and, and really helping somebody potentially live a dream of brewing their beer on a commercial level. So, I mean, I know Jess put a lot of, of blessed sweat and tears in this event, and, you know, shout out to Ryan again for being so cool and to allowing this to happen. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, if you don't come out, you're making a huge mistake. And plus, you might be, you might be on the show. Of course. <laughs> I'll right. be here. Pouring beers. Yeah, but yeah, I'm doing I'm doing two beers, a cream ale and a, and a goza, so definitely come out and support. Enjoy good foods. Be, be craft beer. Drink local be craft. But yeah, that's it. That's why that I might be say. the official motto now. That might be the official motto. According to Facebook. The votes are going up. So uh, thanks again for watching and listening to my birthday beer palooza. Beer palooza. It's been fun. One of my more favorite episodes. I've had fun with it. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Also, guys, feel free to comment back on our stuff. I really love viewer comments, viewer feedback, and I'd really like for you guys to kind of tell us what we're doing well and what we're not doing well, and and we'll respond. We'll let you guys know what we think. So yeah. definitely comment back on our Send videos. Us let comments, us know, man. Questions, anything. We're quick to respond. Yep. We're, this is this is what we love, man. This is what we do. So we're, yeah. we'll be quick to get back to you, and we'll we'll try and help you guys out with whatever you guys want. Cool. Can you say any last words that now that you just sat down? Yeah. Um, His on. mic's off. His it's mic's on. on. It's on. It's on. It's on. You sure? Make it I'm quick. not sure. Goose, make it quick. It's on. No, I don't have any. Thing. All right. So Goose is plugging the show. You should check out At The Bar Podcast on all <laughs> social media. <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, uh, we're at oh, The Bar Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. And as once again, Smells. we love me and Jeff love you all. Thanks for your Smells support like and for listening oh and watching. Oh, my God. I love you. very fruity. Huh? I love you guys. Jeff loves you all. Thanks again for listening and watching. Until next time, we'll see you motherfucker next week. Motherfuckers.